hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel today this is amen clothing youtube channel where we use pattern drafting to teach you how to sew unlimited designs okay like the one you're seeing now so this is a circle skirt it's a flare skirt okay a full flare skirt and i used minimum a very minimal fabric to achieve this three hours of fabric and i didn't even use all so if that is what you want to see keep watching this video to the very end as i show you the tips and the tricks on how to achieve this okay this is what the side looks like and this is what the back of the skirt looks like it's not a gown please it's a skirt the top is a different and i also made the top so let's head straight to the pattern drafting so here is our pattern you'll be needing your basic skirt pattern of course okay then i want to show you something now look at this a flare skirt, a circle skirt is just a circle. Now, if you want to get a circle like so on a fabric to fit you, I'm a very I'm on a very small side, like I'm slim. So for me to get a fabric that is going to get this kind of circle, that means I'll be wearing a whole lot of yards and it's gonna be heavy. I don't want that. I'll be doing this if I'm sewing, let's say, a wedding gown or it's for a special occasion. So since it's just something I can wear to church or something I can wear elsewhere and I don't want it to be heavy. So I'm going to be showing you how to use your basic skirt pattern to achieve that very effect you saw at the beginning of this video. So you'll be needing your pens, your ruler, of course, your scissors. Okay, I'll go ahead to explain the basic skirt pattern for those of you that do not know what a basic skirt pattern is. Okay, so basic skirt pattern is just half of your front this is my center front this very one you're seeing now is my center front okay and this is my dart this is my hip line of course this is the that very line is my guideline hip line my knee line and my hem line where you want it to stop okay so that's just the features of a basic skirt and having done that next thing i'm going ahead to remove my waistband from my basic skirt i'm going ahead to remove the band of the skirt, the waistband of the skirt, okay? So I'm using 1.5 inches. You can use 1 inch or 1.5 inches, but do not use more than 1.5 inches so it doesn't look awkward. So having done that, I'm marking 1.5 inches all the way across the skirt pattern. And I'll go ahead to use my ruler to join the dotted lines like so. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do well to subscribe, turn on your notification bell so you'll be the first person to know when I post new videos on this channel. So having done that, now I'm going ahead to remove that guideline. Of course, it's nothing. It's just a guideline to help you know where to put your tape when you're taking measurements. So it's nothing. I went ahead to take it out. And now we are going to be cutting our skirt waistband from the 1.5 inches that we marked. And that is what I'm doing right now. So since we want our waistband to be fitted, we're going ahead to be remove. We'll go ahead to remove the dart. Okay, we'll go ahead to remove the dart on the waistband. Since I want my waistband to be fitted, I'll go ahead to remove the waistband. I'm labeling front skirt waistband. Please, whatever we we'll do to the front is what you're going to be doing to the back. So you want to pay close attention because whatever you do to your front is what you're going to do to the back. Okay, to your back pattern. So I'm going ahead now to remove the dart. And having removed it, I'll be joining my pattern like so. So it's fitted on me when I put it on. So the waist is fitted on me when I put it on. I labeled center front, okay? And then I'm going to use my tape to join this together. Of course, I'll be using my tape to join this together like so. So I'll be using my tape to join this together like so, okay? And yes, our front waistband has been formed. Okay, this is our front waistband and um, it has been formed. Having done that now, you want to set this aside also and work on the skirt. Okay, this is what it looks like. You want to set it aside and work on the skirt. So having done that now, for the skirt, I want to remove this dart. Of course, we need a flare. We want to create a circle, flare. Okay, so we are going to be removing that that day now what we're going to be doing is to extend our bust apart measurement mine is three inches and i'll be extending it all the way down to the hemline okay i'll be extending it with dotted lines all the way down to the hemline so having done that i'll be using my ruler to join the dotted lines together Now, 
like so i'll be using my ruler to join the dotted lines together okay so we haven't done that now next thing we're going to do is to manipulate our dart of course we're going to cut the dart open just as i'm doing now we're going to be cutting the dart open And now I'm going ahead to cut on the line of that brushed apart measurement that I marked. You're going to cut on top of that line, on the line. That's where you're going to cut. You cut, you go ahead and cut, 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 until you get to the very point where your dart stops. Okay? You get to the very point where your dart stops. Now, when you close the dart, you have an opening. Of course, we are forming the circle gradually. And when you close it, your dart opens up. So, one dart manipulation trick. Okay, I hope you got that. So I'm going ahead to tape this part down, meaning I've closed the dart. I'm going ahead to tape it down now, like so. So because we want more fullness, we want to form a circle, we're going ahead now to add some lines so that we can slash and spread to form the circle we desire, okay? To form the kind of circle we desire. Now we're going to be drawing guidelines. These lines are going to help you to know where to cut your scissors, to put your scissors while cutting, so you don't... It's not necessarily that you're cutting on top of the lines, okay? There is no measurement for the line. It's just a guideline to help you know where to put your scissors, to make your work easier, okay? So, I'm going to have to draw in the guidelines. Like I said, there's no measurement. And remember, the more tinier your lines are, the more spread you're going to have, and the more fuller your skirt will be, and the more fabric you will be needing. I hope that is understandable, okay? So I'm gonna have to draw my style lines, my guidelines for the slashing and spreading, and this is what they look like. So I'll go ahead to start cutting, okay? I'll go ahead to start cutting. You're cutting through and not through. You want to get to the tip of your skirt, the very upper part, like the part that is close to the waist. You don't want to cut open, you just want to Cut as close as possible. That is what I mean by cutting to and not through. You want to cut to that part as close as possible, but you're not ripping it open entirely. Okay. So, I'm going ahead to cut now, like so. So, same thing I'll be doing to all the lines. Cut, cut, cut. All the way, like so. Like I said, the more lines you have, the more cuts you're going to make and the more spreads you're going to have. That means your circle is going to be more wider and definitely you'll be needing more fabric. Okay. You can also use this to form a circle depending on the amount of fabric you have and what occasion you want to use the dress for, the, how you want the flare to come out, how circle you want it to be. Okay. That was why I brought the small circle for an illustration when we were starting. So this is what it looks like. I'll help, I'll hop to the floor to do this because my table, the space isn't that much. So I'm going straight to do this on the floor so you guys can see it clearly. So now this is what it looks like. I'm trying to adjust my ring light. So this is what it looks like. Okay. And now I'll go ahead to spread. But remember our center front line is straight. So I'm going to be using this part of the towers as a guideline you know there is this table for tailoring that has marks on it like rules something i don't have it but you must have seen people using it it's green in color that has that kind of green stuff on it so i'm going to be using my ties that very line as okay as the straight line for my center front now i'm going to be tilting this outwards okay i'm going to be tilting this outwards just watch closely what i am doing I'm going to be tilting this outward to form that very kind of outer flare in front. So I'm going to be as much as you want. You can open this as much as you want. Trust me. You can, depend on the kind of fabric you have. Like I said, if I'm to make a wedding gown, I'll be using it round like a full circle. But what I have is just three yards of fabric and I still want to achieve that very effect. So that is what I'm doing now. I tilted it this way. I'm going to be adding a fresh pattern paper underneath. I don't have so much paper to use for all this so i'm going to be using the fresh pattern paper just at the hemline of it okay to put to hold it together so i'm going to have to add a fresh pattern paper like so and i'll be taping down that very particular part of the center front 
I think I'm okay with the spread. So I'm going to be taking it down. You can spread as much as you want, depending on the amount of fabric that you want, that you have, sorry. You can spread as much as you want. I went ahead to check it to from the center front, from the actual place where the center front is. And I saw what I'm having. This isn't necessary, but I just decided to check it to know how much I spread it. It's not necessary, okay? So I decided to reduce this spread because of my fabric. I was being skeptical that my fabric couldn't be enough. And at that point, I was like, nah, it will be enough or whatever. So I decided to leave it that way. And then adjusted, readjusted the other part. Okay. And I taped this down here. As you can see, I didn't use the line that I marked. I had to open it up the more. And I checked how the amount of space that I left. So for that very part where we closed our dart, it's just going to naturally open up by itself. Whatever space is opening up is the way it should be because that is the amount of space we got from the dart that we closed. So whatever amount that opened up is the way it should be. Please do not try to tamper with that very area. Okay, so having done that now, go ahead to start slashing and spreading the other side considering my very first slash and spread so i used five inches and i'll be using five inches all the way for the spaces in between the whole slash and spreading okay i'm going to be using five inches all the way for the spaces in between the whole slash and spreading i hope you understand what i'm trying to say if you have any question just leave it in the comment section and i'll reply you as soon as possible so i'm trying to join more papers like I said, I, I don't want to waste paper and I don't even have more than enough. So I'm trying to join papers and it's actually good to join these papers like this. It's economical and but if you're not a pro in doing this, you can just get your full sheet of paper and place your pattern on it and start spreading. Okay, so you don't get confused. So I'm going to have to spread all the way like so using the same amount of space for all except that part where the dart opens by itself naturally okay so i'm gonna have to spread them like so and i'm joining more fab joining more papers okay joining more paper So this is the last one and I'm going to be taping it down, okay? So now following the very line of the white pattern, which is my actual skirt pattern, I'm going to be smoothing the hemline, okay? I'm going to be cutting off the excesses on the hemline to get the actual length that I actually have. So I'm following, as you can see, my white pattern, which is my actual skirt pattern. For every paper that looks like it's hanging around and it's going to rip off, I have to use my tape to hold it down so it doesn't rip off and I don't get confused when I'm cutting on the fabric. So this is what it looks like. Okay. I think this is what it looks like. I don't know why. I actually thought I was filming this properly, but you guys, you see it clearly when I'm cutting it on the fabric. Okay. I'm trying to shift it well. So this is what it looks like. Okay. This is how much circle i have remember this is just one side of my front i'm going to be having this unfold to get a full front okay so that hip area that looks like it's kind of pointed we don't want that we want something straight so i'm going ahead now to remove that part i'm going ahead to remove that part okay So 
So you can smoothen out that part. You can just use your scissors and smoothen it out. At this point, I don't know what is wrong with my ring light. Seriously. At this point, I don't know what is wrong with it, but never mind. So having done this now, we'll go ahead to place this on our fabric and we'll cut. So I've placed this on my fabric and I'll go ahead and start cutting it out immediately. Remember, you want to place your center front on fold. Okay? You want to place your center front on fold. If you have more fabric, you can still decide to tilt the center front like only the hemline whereas your waist will still be at the center front you want to shift the hemline a little if you feel your fabric will be more than enough so i'm going ahead now to cut on my fabric okay i'm leaving a little allowance about half inch at the upper area where i'm going to be attaching my waistband okay and for the side seam i don't want to do much this is a flare skirt i don't want to do much i'll just be leaving one inch only at the side seam okay just one inch only at the side seam and for the hem area i'm not going to be leaving any allowance this fabric is actually poly so i'm not going to be folding it in i'll just cut it smoothly with my scissors and that's it So I'm trying to adjust and here it is. I'm done cutting it and this is what it looks like. So you guys, I'll go ahead to open it up now so you'll see what it actually looks like, okay? I'll go ahead to open it up, just the front, which I cut on fold. I'll go ahead to open it up so you guys will see. I'm marking my center front notch so when I'm fixing the waistband, I don't get confused, okay? This is what the front looks like trying to show you this is how much spread i had for the front and i'll try to hold it so you see okay can you see that can you see that and that's basically it so i'll go ahead to explain the sewing process so I've, at this point i've cut the front and the back and i'm going ahead to explain the sewing process you want to place your front right side facing right side remember there's a zipper at the back and you're going to be stitching the sides Okay, right side facing right side for the front and the back. You're going to be stitching the sides. And having stitched both sides of the front and the back like so, okay, you also go ahead to stitch up your zipper area. You also go ahead to stitch up your zipper area. And having done that, you go ahead to attach your waistband. I have two waistbands for the front and for the back I have four waistbands, okay. For the bank, I have for the back. Sorry, I have four. For the front, I have two waistbands. Okay. If you haven't seen a video of me fixing waistbands, please drop a comment in the comment section, and I'll direct you straight to a video where you see that. And Tala, this is what we have as a finished result. Tell me what you think about the skirt, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.